In order for a musical interface to elegantly host the tunings and tuning systems covered in this video series, that interface needs to be defined by the same parameters as the tunings. MOS scales and regular temperaments, for example, are two-dimensional structures defined by combinations of a generating interval and a period interval, and so a 2D interface could consistently and elegantly host those tunings and scales. The interfaces of most Western instruments, however, could not. Musicians who already play Western instruments may be tempted to add valves, keys, frets, etc. to the instruments they already know so that their instruments could play more intervals, but unfortunately, the one-dimensional nature of Western tuning around which their instruments were designed inherently limits those instruments from a tuning perspective. The interfaces also tend to become cumbersome if the player wants access to too many pitches. This isn't to say, of course, that doing so is an invalid approach to playing in alternative tunings. This video, however, recommends a different method. The obvious way to visually represent a two-dimensional structure is with a grid. We can then assign one vector, or move, on the grid to represent the generating interval, and another vector to represent the period. As long as the two vectors are co-prime, that is to say no combination of one vector will arrive at the other vector, and each is fully reduced, which is to say that each individual's vector's x-coordinate does not share any factors with the y-coordinate, then all other locations in the grid can be defined as combinations of those two original vectors and, therefore, as combinations of the generator and period. This defines the interface by the same parameters as the tuning systems. It's important to note at this point that, while useful, an understanding of why these keyboards work isn't necessary to play them. With Mean Tone Temperament as an example and Western Music's note naming system, here are a few examples of possible two-dimensional note layouts which can host any 2D tuning system. The Wesley note layout is objectively the simplest note layout and keeps all MOS scales equally compact. The Wiki Haydn note layout has been used on some concertinas, and its advantages were described in depth mathematically in the paper Tuning Continua and Keyboard Layouts linked in the description. The Chromatic Button Accordion has two systems, referred to as the B system and C system, each being a mirror of the other. While the accordions themselves are tuned to 12 tone equal temperament, the note layout supports alternative tunings. The Bosonquet note layout, or Bosonquet, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, was invented by Robert Bosonquet to perform music in 31 tonical temperament, though it can support any other 2D tuning. Notice how this layout leads to a particularly linear representation of the diatonic scale, which may be of particular use to keyboardists who are already familiar with the piano. Also notice how the fingerings on interfaces like these remain consistent regardless of how many notes of a tuning one uses, because including more or less notes merely adds them to or removes them from the edges of the interface, instead of squeezing them in between others as would happen on, say, a piano or a guitar fretboard. This representation of the notes also generalizes the interface so as to have the same fingering for the same MOS scales even across different tunings in which that MOS scale exists. That's because the scales are defined by the notes' locations in the period generator array, and those locations remain consistent on a 2D interface defined by the same parameters, even as the size of the generator and period change. When one arranges notes in a 2D grid like that, the result is what's called a generalized keyboard. Often the grid is hexagonal, which is why they're also referred to as hexagonal keyboards, and since the layout is regular, where any musical structure like scale, chord, or entire song retains its shape regardless of starting point, in stark contrast to the piano, they are also referred to as isomorphic keyboards, where iso means same and morph means shape. Because of this regularity, these interfaces are arguably better suited not just for alternative tunings, but for standard western tuning as well. In the next video, I'll outline some possible reimaginings of Western instruments which would generalize their interfaces so that they could be easily played in alternative tunings. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every dollar pledged allows me that much more freedom to focus on making videos like this one. Thanks again.